on camera now. Same. Yo! <laughs> I should have never yelled that. You really oh, should. Well. That was loud as ever. I, it's because I leaned into the mic while doing it. But what it do, homies? Yeah, welcome to uh, episode two of uh, Pirate Talk. Matey, arr, arr, arr. I'm Monkey D Hokage, and I'm here with my my right hand man, Pirate Hunter HV Nimbus. Oh my gosh, yo, what it do? <laughs> what? I'll be honest. Hmm. If we gonna be in the One Piece universe? Yeah. I'm gonna have to have a double fruit because I don't know how to swim. I mean, just to be fair, even before Luffy ate his, his devil fruit, he couldn't swim anyway. No, I thought he was the, the best swimmer. That's what he was bragging about as a kid, right? I thought he was shitty as a swimmer. I was pretty sure he was He was bragging that he was like, oh. uh, I could be a pirate, I'm the best swimmer or whatever. And then uh, Shanks was like teasing him or something like that. Okay. Like, just being a swimmer doesn't mean you could be a pirate. This is a small thing that I didn't even notice until now, but the chapter one, Shanks was laughing at Luffy because he could not swim. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think it was because he, he just couldn't swim. I could have sworn yeah. he could swim, and he was laughing at him because he couldn't, because that's not all you have to do to be a pirate. Okay. I must have got that mixed up with something else then. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it is what it is. <clears throat> yeah so uh let me pull this up here is it on this side yeah it's on this side perfect so oh gosh that was an ugly ass cough man <laughs> don't boot that out wait what do you see he says live implies he could yeah, no, so, yeah, there it is, so, uh, Shadow over here, shout out to him, thanks for coming back to the stream, dog. uh, Shadow over here, he said that it was actually Buggy that was a good swimmer until he oh, lost it. Oh, okay, I, I definitely got that mixed up. Yeah, Buggy was a good swimmer, then he ate the devil fruit and he couldn't swim, so I do remember that. Okay. All right, so yeah, speaking of Buggy, yeah, we're about to go talk about episode two, y'all. So, uh, episode two, titled of the uh, One Piece live action, is The Man in the Straw Hat, which, in this episode, they do talk about the straw hat a lot, and uh, particularly through Luffy's uh, flashbacks and some little interactions in present day. Yeah, we talking about the myth, the legend, Buggy, Buggy D Clown, because you know wow. he's a Willa D member. Okay. Where's Buggy at? That's why well, I put Buddy instead of Buggy. <laughs> there we go. And speaking of which, because I had to, I actually rewatched the episode before we even start, like before I even hopped on Discord with you, uh, and uh, I'm gonna get to it in a second. But yeah, uh, first ep the episode two title is the uh, the man in the straw hat, where we talk about you know it implies Luffy's treasure in a way. That's not what he's going after, but something that he holds near and dear to him, which is the straw hat itself. You know what? You gonna pull out your straw hat? Hell yeah! <laughs> there, I got my straw hat on. <laughs> It looks so weird just sitting on my head like that, but I'm gonna keep it like that. Yes, it does look weird. I feel like I look like Erica Badu. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, wait, there we go. And, uh, the episode, you know, of course, opens up with a flash, a Luffy's flashback again with, uh, but he's learning how to use his devil fruit power now. Because, you know, last episode we found, we see Luffy eat his devil fruit in his flashback. The gum gum fruit. 
and he's already got his first named attack. He learned he's trying to learn how to do the gum gum pistol, and he breaks Makino's chair in her bar. And I find it kind of interesting that they chose Makino to tell Luffy about the lore behind Devil Fruits instead of Shanks. So, do you think because she did that, she's going to kind of play like a bigger role in season two? She is supposed to be the mother figure for, You're right. for Luffy. Like, they all, the whole village, like the same, like in the anime, they looked out for him but as far as in the live action it seems like mm -hmm. she's going to be like the main mother figure or parent parental figure for him you're right so anytime they go back to um like how they did from when he uh, first got his bounty it's going to come back to her looking at the bounty so anytime there's news about luffy they're always going to come back to her So do you think that uh, she's almost like a uh, an aunt? <clears throat> What's her name from Hunter Hunter? Aunt Mido? Mido? Um, yeah, I would say so. Cause that's the kind of vibe I got from her there. And uh, yeah. So oh, so Blue uh, Shadow says here again that uh, he just checked the official manga translation and Shanks calls Luffy the anchor because you know <clears throat> oh right because he can't swim oh thank you shout out to the, the encyclopedia over here of One Piece man you you the, you the goat for that one <laughs> and so and then we finally see uh Shanks actually tells Luffy that he's officially leaving and not coming back and I kind of had to sit there and think about it for a second so like Link, uh, after Makino talks to Luffy about the Devil Fruit lore, he uh, Shanks walks into the bar, and he uh, pretty and Shanks pretty much uh, tells Luffy that he's leaving and not coming back. And Luffy asks him, "Are you going after the One Piece?" But I feel like this also kind of ties into something Bucky says later on in the episode. Where you have to be like up to date with both the anime and the manga to understand who gave Shanks those scars and everything like that. But do you think he's going after Blackbeard? He just didn't mention it. Um, Shanks. Yeah, because you know in the manga he never really went after the One Piece until after he found out Luffy's made officially an emperor now. Right. And. And then in uh, the live action, Shanks never directly told Luffy he's going after One Piece. All he did was just kind of say, like, Luffy said, are you going after One Piece? And Shanks just like, hmm. Oh, okay. Um. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadow said, uh, Buggy's description fits the Shanks we see in the execution, that see at the execution. It does, but we will get to that in a little bit. Go ahead, B. Oh, sorry, I was reading. Uh, but I don't see him going after, like, right now, I don't see him going after Blackbeard. You know what I mean? True. It doesn't seem but... right, at least not for the time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like he just say like he's just telling Luffy he's going after the One Piece just because uh he just kind of want to have to tell people like just in case like you know they don't get renewed for a season two or something like that he just got like you know let's just kind of speed this along just in case type situation. I think so, or maybe there's something there that he just knows about that no one else does. Yeah, Blackbeard. I don't... Okay, whatever. I, I can't say anything else. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm trying to make sure this chat box is working correctly. I hope it is. What's wrong? Was my chat... Is my chat coming up on screen? Hold on. I'm, I'm going to test this out.
Yeah, yes, there. Yep, it is. All right, cool. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you. It is that, that's really fast. That was like kind of one of my things I've been working on this whole time. <laughs> uh, what I leave off at? So yeah, we see uh Shanks talking to Luffy, pretty much telling him, yeah, he's leaving. I'm not coming back. Later, kid. Ooh, so let me ask you this, because Shadow says Blackbeard will still be under right, uh, Whitebeard, or, like, so he wouldn't be at... Well, no, because it, even if uh, Blackbeard was still working under Whitebeard, uh, what is it? Chase still had the scar either way. He just happened, like, maybe he just happened to run into Blackbeard while Blackbeard was just off of Whitebeard's crew doing something else. But then he already had his, like, he got the scars while Blackbeard was still under his crew, right? Under Whitebeard's crew, right? Did Shanks fight Mihawk at some point? Yeah. But I think it had to be around the time. And he had to, like, he fought Mihawk right before he lost his arm. Because that's the reason why Mihawk won't fight him anymore, because he doesn't have his uh, arm anymore. Uh, yeah, and Shanks always had like he had the scar when he met Luffy, like the whole time. So even if Blackbeard was part of a uh, Whitebeard's crew, Shanks would have if let's so let's just say he didn't get the scar until after Blackbeard left the crew. That means Shanks never had the scar while he met Luffy, but he had the scar when he met Luffy. So that means Blackbeard is probably still part of Whitebeard's crew at some point. Like, he's probably just... This is probably around the time right when he left. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because... And here's why. Because Ace was already part of the crew. Who was part of Whitebeard's crew. That's the key factor there. Okay. Blackbeard, yeah, Blackbeard left the crew around the time Ace was part of the crew. So that's why Ace was after him the whole time. This is Kid Luffy here. So which means Blackbeard is still part of the crew. But yeah, Shanks still got the scar. Oh man, I'm crazy. I'm a genius, man. I'm a genius. Let's, even though it's thousands of people said it. <laughs> but let's move on. I'm so done. So now we flash forward back to present day. Uh, we got the 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 trio here of Luffy, Nami, and Zoro on the ship that Nami stole from the Buggy Pirates, and Luffy is excited because this is his first uh, pirate steal. The best way he would describe it his his pirating career, like stealing a piece of treasure, uh -huh. and he's excited about it. And uh, he's hopping around the ship. While Nami's trying to crack open Captain Morgan's safe. And. No lie. I think this is like. The most brother and sister type thing ever. Let me see here. See if I get the perfect screenshot of it. Right. But it's. uh, You know when Luffy put his like his head over top of Nami's head. Yeah. Like I don't know. I ain't gonna lie. I got kind of like a, a brother and sister type vibe from it. Like. The brother annoying the sister. That's why I feel like it's, it's supposed to be like their relationship, in, um, at least for the live action. Even in the uh, in the anime, it feels like and in the manga, it kind of just feels like this is a like they kind of have a a brother sister type thing. I never really kind of look at them as a relationship type thing. I think people only saw it that way because of how often Luffy has to save Nami. True, but you won't do... I mean, you do that for your, same, for your sibling as well, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, Nam, like, you know, Luffy say, like, he puts his head over Nami while Nami's trying to crack open Captain Morgan's safe here. And, uh, she knocks away Luffy's head, and this is when we get, like, the first idea of how important the straw hat is to Luffy. And uh Right. You know, she's he tells Nami 
that's like you know pretty much that's his treasure in a way that's why he cares about it so much and can we kind of like well, no, we don't flash back into a little bit later on about the straw hat but yeah no they pretty much describe no we see it no we see it in the very beginning my bad my bad my bad ignore me ignore me No, he didn't. Okay, because I'm also kind of reviewing it through on my side as well, like my Netflix here. Okay. But we get uh, Nami talking to Luffy. Luffy's pretty much explaining to Nami how much the straw hat is important to him. And Nami finally cracks open the safe, and we see a poster of Captain... What? Captain of the Black Cat's Quarrels. How you say his name? Correct me if I'm wrong on that. That's right. Say again? That's right. Kuro. Kuro, yep. Captain of the Bees. Like his crew's name is the Black Cats, right? Uh huh. Correct? Knew it. Wait, Let's no. go. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, wait. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Black Cat Pirates, yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. My Erica Badu style hat right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I could probably be her son. So we, well, we see a glimpse of the, uh, the poster. We also see the uh the grand the grand line map and on top of that we also see in the uh the safe here so i think it was oh and it looks it looks like his this is uh captain morgan's oh no so yeah cool, cool we got coral's uh bounty poster of 16 million we also got the uh the grand line map and then we also got the ID card for Baroque Words, which is a pretty nice little Easter eggs again. But I feel like that is still kind of setting up season two, which we already talked about later, on, like earlier this week, how uh, the Baroque Works might just be season two's uh, main plot line. Which and, they are, really. Which it, it, I agree with you. It should be like pretty much the main thing there, because that's like Alabaster should be the main thing they focus on because they're already in the Grand Line. But how many episodes do you think season two should be? Like I said, yeah, I think it should be ten, just I, to make sure. Like I was safely. really just talking about that earlier. I said because I saw an article earlier saying that if it goes all the way to Alabasta, that's six whole arcs that they're going through. Exactly. And um, since they're going through that many, they're going to need a few more episodes to get that out, like to like you know express what they're like what they need to express in for those mm -hmm. arcs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Cause I, you're talking I, about I said they either two or three more episodes. Cause like what they Cause what happens in the Grand Line? It's uh Log Town. Yep, yeah, you got Log Town, you got uh you, me and Dorian Bragi. That was a few episodes there. You got the Baroque works. You got Vivi. Like, we need to meet Chopper. That's Drum Island. So, yeah, like... Uh, yep, it, three of them right there. Uh, uh, I might say at least 12 episodes at, as a minimum. Okay. I guess so. Maybe you Yeah. Can. Laboon. Shadow said Laboon. Oh, yeah. Laboon. So, yeah, you meet yeah, Laboon and Crocus. So yeah, a lot happened. So yeah, actually, Imani, two to ten. Yeah. I'm going with twelve. At least it has to at least be twelve episodes for season two, just to kind of yeah make sure. Arcs. So two episodes an arc. Yeah, because like what East Blue wasn't that long. Like it was long enough to make it at least eight episodes, because you can confine everything into certain things or take things out that wasn't really important to the main story. Right, but. The Grand Line arts, they, like, everything ties into one another, so they have to kind of fit everything in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadow said, if they include Logtown, that got ex uh, excluded, that's a tough script to write. But they can't get rid of Logtown, though. Because that's when you meet Dragon. That's where, you that's get where, you that's meet... where Smoker gets introduced. And they already... Yeah, that's where Sm yeah, they already yeah, get introduced. Yep, they show Smoker at the end of season one, mm -hmm. so they and they have to introduce Smoker. So, mm 
I don't think they can really cut Little Garden either, because Little Garden, that's when he meet Dorian Broggy, and that's how... That's where Usa finds out his dream, like, to be become the brave, like, the bravest man on the sea. So uh-huh. he has to meet those two giants for his dream to come true. Like, uh-huh. not come true, but for him to figure out what, exactly what he want his main dream to be. So you can't really cut that either. So yeah, I'm yeah. So they're gonna have to do the whole twelve episodes thing if they want to try and fit everything smoothly like how they did for the first season. But yeah, so uh, let's move on for a little bit. <laughs> uh, here's the one thing I think they did a good job on is uh, Nami explaining the the One Piece world to us. I'm gonna try and screenshot it real quick after she draws the map out. Move your hand, Nami. Dag. Oh my gosh. Well, Nami had to explain it to Luffy, which technically is explaining it to an idiot. So that's perfect, you know? Exactly. And I think the way how she did it too was like so perfect. And the map that she drew for it as well was actually like really dope. Let's see if I can screenshot this. Got it. Did it work? <laughs> there it is. All right, so we got Nami's map here, which again she did a good job drawing it out. So in the One Piece world, we got the North, South, East, West blues, and then we got the large strip of land, which is the red line. And this single line right here is the Grand Line itself. So we got the red line and the Grand Line. And she said, in the Grand Line is where you get the larger islands, and the most piratey of all pirates to ever pirate out there. Mm-hmm. And then... The, I, I like the way how she explained it, because I've seen a lot of videos of people trying to explain the One Piece, like, world to them, to people. And some, so a lot of people explained it good, but the way how they explained it in a live action was literally to describe it to dummies. Was like you got north, south, east, west, one big ass island in the middle, one place where everything or all the pirates happen to piratey pirate stuff at, and then that's where all the big bad guys are at. If you can survive here, you can survive anywhere. And I'm like, you know what? That that that's how you explain it. Yeah, it was, they had to explain it, especially for since the live action had played for anybody who actually didn't watch the anime. Exactly. So it had to be the easiest explanation they can give. Like, if you're trying to explain um, history to people and to not people, to children in, um, in school. Hey, you know what's what I kind of liked about this uh, this one particular scene? What? And this is just from a personal thing. I love One Piece. One Piece is goaded, in my personal opinion. But to me, like, I understand how big and vast the One Piece world is. But to me personally, it doesn't feel that big big because of and it's just because it's just like how the anime and the manga is just how it's written where it's like you just gotta jump from island to island as quickly as possible mm-hmm. where able to actually see them like real life people on a ship and then having the navigator explain this is how the world works in this area like in certain areas it made it feel a lot bigger and honestly it made it feel like it's bigger than our world that's true. It made it feel like, like it was a long cruise. Like, if you went on a cruise from, like, California or Florida, and you somehow ended up in Japan by going uh Or west. the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, like, going west, like, straight. Or is it Pacific or Atlantic? Whatever. If you go over Pacific, you'll be there in a shorter time. If you go over Atlantic, you're pretty much going through damn near every single last continent. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's what it made it feel like. I'm like, okay, why is it taking so long to get around the world? And then you really got to think about it because in our world, we even got the, what is it, the book and movie uh, around mm-hmm. the world in 80 days. There ain't no way One Piece is 80 days. Exactly. But you know what it is, though? And I, I just I actually had to sit there and think about it. And I'll be honest with everybody here. I didn't. Re- I recently just. I ain't gonna say recently just got into One Piece, but like, 
I've always watched it back in, even when it was on 4Kids, but I never really truly followed it until like 2019-20 is when I actually like sat there and actually watched it. So I think it's because I had pretty much every episode at my disposal. I managed to catch up versus with people who actually like was staying with it from Same. when it first came out to where it's at now. So maybe that's just how I personally feel was like because I got everything in pretty much one big go at my disposal, it it didn't feel as big. But that could just be me. No, that's how I felt too. <laughs> that's literally how I did it. I had like a multitude of episode episodes to watch and I just binged it. Exactly. So it was just all right. So I'm glad we're I'm glad we're on that same boat there. Uh-huh. And <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, and the scene here too, the scene actually made me feel, because I also, I really love Pirates of the Caribbean. My, one of my favorite uh, movie properties out there. But this also kind of made me feel like this could be part of Pirates of the Caribbean in a way, which I'm kind of hoping, knock on wood, I'm not saying Disney buys One Piece, but in the manga, we have, like we get introduced to this particular character, but he only... They never showed what he looks like. He just kind of came up in different like speech bubbles, but of the uh, the man marked by flames, and this is a YouTuber I watch, and he was like, it, we, and he kind of put a th- like a, a kind of like a awesome, not like theory, but more so uh, like his own personal head it Whereas like he thought it would be dope if like older designs the man marked by flames if he designs them after Jack Sparrow. <laughs> and I'm like that that would be kind of dope I'm not gonna lie that would be dope and then after he said that I've been kind of and then I saw like and then after he said that that was like a few months ago I saw that episode like that episode but video and then with coming back to how Nami's explained the One Piece world I was like this kind of feels like Pirates of the Caribbean type feeling too mm-hmm. like very piratey and that's what I felt like when it first started when it, um the execution scene of uh, Roger, like it felt very piratey, right? Um, uh-huh. it felt like it felt actually it felt like watching Jack Sparrow's execution, and I was just waiting for like some type of mess to happen. I I we need we need what's his name? Not Jack Sparrow. Wow, I'm at, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Jack Sparrow's real name. Yeah. Johnny Depp? Yeah, thank you. I don't know how I... Th- I feel like I'm about to get roasted for that. Yeah, uh, everything that happened in court? No. Hey, uh, true. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the... One, I, I, again, I have to agree with the guy. Or that has to at least design some character... Like, at least one character off of Pirates of the Caribbean. And then on top of that... I feel like uh, if the live action does well enough, Johnny Depp has to show up somewhere somehow. Even just like with a little cameo, like, hey, there go Johnny Depp. He just happens to look like, you know. Luffy's one of the, um, Luffy ends up being like an old pirate. I'm okay with that. Like, uh. Like, what if they made Johnny Depp? be like one of the old legendary pirates so they're like, legendary enough where you can't um actually see him in like anything but his picture is like everywhere or like somebody will have a flashback and see his face like uh like rocks i'm, com- I'm completely okay with that so if you saw johnny depp as uh rocks you would be okay i'll be okay with it <laughs> okay because and here's why. Because Rox is a Willa D member, right? Sorry for a little tangent. Uh-huh. This is spoilers if you guys are not caught up with the manga or anime. But I feel like if, because you know the Willa D, right? Mm-hmm. Like people who have the initial D in their name, they always have a tendency of being like really, really goofy, even like in their own way. That's. You know what? I didn't actually think about it. But that's kind of true. I was, hey. gonna, I was gonna say law, but I don't think law actually counts. Well, law, well, law is goofy and like uh, 
Like and, then, and like she's because he's always constantly annoyed in some type of way. Uh huh. They ends up. Giving but this. In. Yeah, he ends up giving in. So that's like kind of goofy in a way. But I'll say like uh. But like pretty much the main people. But again, like I agree with you. Like Law's like I think he kind of falls under a certain banner. Where I would say like Law is more like a. They just had like how can I put it? Like to me personally, I feel like Law was just happened to be given the will of D. What up? You know what? You might be right. Like what it was like. Okay, we need to at least throw another Will of D member here. All right, fine. People like Law. Let's make Law a Will of D member. But you know what? I think it only made sense at the point in time because he was all he was. Con- nah, sorry, he was going against Do Flamingo. Exactly. So, I he was. Well, spoiler. We all know Do Flamingo was it. One of the celestial dragons, or yeah, uh, you know he was a celestial dragon. So, and everybody with the will of D always goes against the world government or the authority of the world government, basically. So I don't know. Honestly, I think it might yeah. be convenient for law, maybe. We'll do. We should discuss that a little bit deeper. Make a video of it, just like. Is Law truly a member of the Will of D? <laughs> Even though he has the name. But, anyway, uh, back on this. So, yeah, we finally, uh... So, Nami's talking to Zoro and Luffy about the the One Piece world. And, uh... We see a red explosion happen right here. And then, so, Nami and Zoro catch eye of it. And Luffy says, oh, you know, this, this smoke smells a little weird. But it turned out to be knockout gas. And, uh, Luffy, you know, being a smart thinker that he is, he, uh, glizzy globbles the, uh, the, the Grand Line map you here. You did not just say that. Yeah, I did. He, he gives, like, look at it, he, he's just looking at it. He's like, well, down a hatch. All right. <laughs> and, uh, but we, he's doing it to protect the Grand Line map because he realized Oh, that's not because he looks at the window and he says, "Oh, that's not the navy. That's that's a pirate's there." And then we flash forward a few scenes, and uh, Nami, Zoro, and Luffy wake up in a box. And Zoro realizes his swords is gone. Nami realizes his uh, like her uh, navigation stuff is gone. Uh-huh. And you better like it. But yeah, you better like the One Piece live action. It's so good. That's why we're here talking about it. Oh my gosh. And uh but Luffy is happy that his hat is still with him. And which also highlights again how important that straw hat is to Luffy. Which I think they're doing a good job of it, you know, making sure like they're really hammering in pay attention, not really pay attention to the straw hat, but this straw hat does have some major significance in the whole grand scheme of things. Right. Which I'm liking. And so, uh, let's see here. Yep, they wake up in a box and we get a shot of Buggy's, uh, sorry, cool. I ain't gonna say spoiler, but the the pirates who kidnapped them and trapped them in the box is the buggy pirates, and uh, the like we kind of get a a look to how the buggy pirates uh is ran, and I ain't gonna lie, you know what type of vibe this kind of gives off to me. What? Remember from Danny Phantom that circus episode? Are you talking about um? Why do I want to call him Control Freak? Oh my God. Yeah, that's that's Team Titans. I know, but that's what his face gives off. No, his name is his name is Freak. Like, it's something it has something to do with the name Freak. I don't know what it is. Nah. Wait, Circus Freak episode. No, I think yeah, his name is Freak Show. Yeah, Freak you were right. His name is Freak Show. I knew what I was talking about. 
There you go. Yeah, look at you, B. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> oh my god, patronizing me. Then the name of the episode was Control Freaks. So uh, no, you was right. Okay, there we go. Oh, you was like B. <laughs> look at you on a roll, man. Oh man. You know we gotta find a a bar that has a trivia night for old cartoons. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a lot of those actually. I was trying to find a scene that maybe shows like the control freaks, uh, well the freak show episode, like the inside the circus. But uh... that that's the close I can get here. But yeah, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit, which I thought was pretty cool. Where it's like a uh. Kind of like a, a crazy ass carnival, like circus. Yeah, that's what. But um, you come to realize they their whole audience is like captive, though. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of laughed at the scenes where. <laughs> what's what's the dude's name? Uh, hold on, the buggy pirates. Which one? The one that's on the unicycle. The one that is the tamer. The one that's the tamer. Oh, I forgot his name. He was never important to me. Oh, I'm about to pull up his name right now. Mochi is his name. Ah, uh, okay. Was his... Okay, I'm trying to remember the episode properly, but I think I'm not remembering right. Was Mochi's lion ever there in the episode? No, because they made a joke to it. Remember when Buggy was like, where's my dancing lion? Yeah, that's what, okay, that's what I remember. I was like, okay, so that means they have the lion. Did the lion say F Buggy and nah? I don't, he just didn't show up. <laughs> because, you know, in the anime, that lion has a lot of personality of his own. Agreed, but... I kind of get why they didn't want to put the line in there. Because, and there's one probably just to say budget too, but the line doesn't really play enough significance in the series to really actually be there. I think it played not in the series, but to the Buggy Pirates, it does. Like he does. Like it, when Buggy was lo when they lost Buggy for like a week or so. I don't know how like a month or I don't know how long they lost Buggy for. And Buggy was like lost, uh, trapped on the um, island. True. That lion was literally. Actually, no. That Wait. lion was like about to be the leader. He literally dreamt to be the leader of the Buggy Pirates, of all and all of them worshiping him and everything. But Buggy's the goat. He can't control. Like he can't run the uh, the Buggy Pirates. It has to be Buggy. Buggy's the goat. He's the Will of Demon. Or he's the fourth emperor of the sea. I understand. That's so weird. But that's, I understand that. But that lion had everything. He had his dream too. You're right. Although all he wanted was meat. He was basically another Luffy. I mean, they could have still put the lion in there. Maybe like get like a, a real life lion and like a lion tamer and just like have him just kind of stand in the background or something. Yeah, he could have done that. <laughs> Shadow said, uh, you know, that's a W for uh, Choo Choo, because now that line's not there, which is facts. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so uh, the reason I found this particular scene funny is because you actually see uh, Mochi here holding up a sign that says applause, <laughs> and then you just see the whole crowd go like, yeah. Because <laughs> they look, they, you can tell they don't want to be there, but at the same time, it's like, you can tell they, they made that for laughs. Uh -huh. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, we finally see Buggy come out in all his amazing glory of Buggy D Clown. And uh, honestly, his whole costume looks great. I will say one thing, though, but this is just from out the SVS. But apparently, so you know those uh, those blue ribbons that's coming out of Buggy's hat? Yeah. B? Yeah? Oh, word. Okay, I thought you hung up on me. I would have got sad. <laughs> oh, no. I said, yeah, I guess you just didn't hear me. 
Oh, where? Uh, so, but you know those uh those blue ribbons that come out of Buggy's head? Yeah. And the SPS uh, order actually came out and said that's actually Buggy's hair. Oh, you know, but that, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, that's fine. It just seems kind of weird for him to have that much of long, that long of hair. You know what I mean? Well, he always had long hair. I know he had long hair, but. Okay, never mind. I thought it was shorter than and I, in my head. I'm I'm picturing his hair being short, shorter than that. Oh, he always had long hair, so so he has pigtails. But, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Buggy always had pigtails this whole time. And uh, what was we about to say? So Buggy's upset because you know n nothing in his circus is coming together. And uh, Luffy's like, oh, I know you, and you're, you're, you're bougie, right, or bogey. He said, it's buggy. And what is it, Luffy says, yeah, everybody knows who you are. And, you know, the iconic nose. Are you making fun of my nose? And then Luffy's like, uh, I mean, I wasn't, but, hey, is that thing real? Which is a little bit of a... I ain't gonna say foreshadowing, what's it called? A little nod to the community where it's like, is this Buggy's real nose? Uh -huh. So, B, I'm gonna ask you, is this Buggy's real nose? I'm gonna be honest, I could not even tell you. They made I mean, it, he had they, it since they he really, had it since he was a kid. Uh huh. But they made, I'll be honest, if it's Buggy's real nose, they did a really good job on how they made it look. Because it looks like a swollen nose it does like the, i didn't know how they were going to do that like was it just going to be like something put on a nose and it's going to like just be like a buggy ball on his nose or they just made they made it look like like the biggest bee in the world stung him and that's what he was stuck with for the rest of his life But you know what, though? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with him having this nose. So we're going to say that's the head cannon, B. We're going to say that's, your, that's, that's our head cannon. He got stung by a big-ass <laughs> B. And uh, so, yeah, Buggy gets mad because they're talking about his nose. They're all the, the, crowd, the crowd cracks me up in this episode because they was gasping. And they was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't talk about his nose. <laughs> I was cracking up at that. The crowd is hands down my favorite cast members in this whole episode. And, uh... Was it... Did we get to the part where, uh... Buggy doesn't talk about Shanks just yet. He just talks about how Captain Morgan stole his map, and then now he wants to get it back. Yeah. Ooh, someone said Buggy could be ha- No! Oh, no, that can explain it. That would be a good theory there. Actually, no, I read that theory somewhere. So Shadow says that Buggy could be half fishman. And so he'd be like a clownfish. And you know how old would be like always making jokes in some way? Whereas like because Buggy's a clown, and he could be half fishman. He'll be a half clownfish. But and so that's why he looks like a clown. But don't all fish men have to have some type of fish attribute like a gill a web like something a fin or even if it's something small uh he could have sharp teeth because what's that dude's name from uh the doflamingo pirates dude from doflamingo pirates which one like he's like half fishman from the Doflamingo? Derringer? No. Ooh. Yeah, Derringer. The high With heel? The, uh, yeah. Because he's half fisherman, isn't he? I don't... I didn't think he was. Oh, wait. He has that fin on his back. But I don't think he was a fishman. Is he? I thought he was half fishman. No. 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 
Okay, I'm questioning myself so hard. Yeah, because it just says he's from the North Blue. Uh... He has horns. I don't know if that fit on his back is real or not. His hand fights fish. He... Oh. Is he a fishman? I think. Shadow well, because I because I know fish. I know uh Jack from the uh the Beast Pirates. He's half fishman. So actually, I think he's a better example. Jack from the Beast Pirates. Uh... He's half fishman, but the he's only thing that you can tell that that is fishman on him. Is when he takes his mask off, he has the sharp teeth. Oh, I didn't know that. So maybe that can be Buggy's way of like his nose, which that's actually a uh, shout out to Shadow for that one. So which means like Buggy's nose can be like the representation of the clownfish in him. And so again, that's why he has like the uh, the the clown theme going because clownfish. But you know how Oda likes his puns and all that. Okay. And then that can trace back to why Buggy was a good swimmer. I was just about to ask that. So is that supposed to be why he's supposed to be a good swimmer when he was younger? Yeah. But then because Jack has a double fruit, and even though he's a fisherman, uh, he can still survive underwater. He just can't move. We never really necessarily seen Buggy in that situation of drowning like that, anyway. Huh. Ah, ah, shout out to you, Shadow. I mean, I've I seen that uh, that theory float around so often. But yeah, uh, let's get back to it here. So uh, Nami is now trying to struck a deal with uh, Buggy to try and escape, which I ain't gonna lie, I was a little upset. Not a little, but I was like, this bitch here. Where she was like, yeah, look here, if you uh, let me go, I'm going to give you a real freak. And she snatches all Luffy's hat, throws it in the air, and then Luffy stretches to get it. And Nami runs outside, and she sees this town, like, uh, she sees the town that they're in, and it's completely destroyed by Buggy. And, uh, Buggy was like, hey, it was, they owe me money pretty much. Is, is that how you put it? He owed me money? Uh, I think so. I'm not going to remember that one line. Yeah, we're just going to walk right past that one there. And then, uh... So we cut over now to, uh... Back to the military base in Shellstown. Was it 153? And, uh... We see, uh... Garp and Bogart talking to Axe Hand Morgan about the situation that happened. And that's when we finally see Kobe in his little Boy Scout uniform in the Navy uniform, as long with uh, Hel Meppo in his too. And then we kind of see a uh, best way to put it here. Like how, I ain't gonna say, I don't really want to say that word. But how much of a jerk he is to Helmeppo, where he calls Helmeppo his useless son. And Garp is starting to kind of question Morgan's actions on how he runs this branch here. Because you could just tell by his face, just like, I don't like the way he said that about your own kid. Uh -huh. And then we go right back to the, uh... Or no, and then... Garp asks Kobe why does he want to be a Marine, and Kobe pretty much asks, tells him, it's because I want to protect people, pretty much. And then we go back to the buggy tent, and so, like, it was a nice little cutaway, some uh, side story action with Kobe, which I started to like that they're doing with, uh, in a live action here, because, you know, in, uh, even in the anime, basically, like, even though Oda never really comes out and tells us, but essentially, uh, Kobe is just like Luffy and Luffy joined them as uh, Marines in a way. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I'm liking how in the live action we're kind of getting that sub B plot there, where it's like you see Luffy with his adventures, but then you also see Kobe going on his adventures here. So I hope they continue that I in the live action because I'm actually really liking Kobe. Kobe's dope. That's what I figured they were doing. I, uh, I at first I figured they were just following um, Garp and showing what like everything that he technically has done since uh luffy ever left uh the village Mm -hmm. and i was like oh so this is we don't get you like in anime you don't get to see much of what garp does until um much later on yeah like not until what until uh he goes and recruits kobe and uh hameto like you don't see anything of them Wait, B, is your audio not coming in? What? I'd be kind of upset if your audio didn't come in this whole time. Alright. There. So I think it's finally working again. All right, so you know what this means then. Uh, we're still going to continue, of course. We're not going to just restart from the whole thing because it's kind of stupid. But on our personal and both Brendan and I, we're probably going to have to re-record the whole thing so we can post it out on the, uh, the, the, the YouTube's channel. You know what? I can mm-hmm. probably... Uh... Oh, because you were streaming it too, right? Yeah. But I'm not actually recording it. I'm, I can take the uh, VOD, download it, and I can send it your way. Yeah, can you do that? Yeah. Thank you. So we'll just and do it that way. Because I finally got it working. And Sharday uh, says hi. Oh, hey, Sharday. <laughs> Yami sama. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let me mark where the audio. Where you realized it at. Alright. That way I can also tell you when I send it to you. It was like 105. Sharday, let me figure this out. Hold on, hold on. Because I'm going to call you something that I know you'll be happy with. Yummy. Alright. Gotta remember that one. All right, Shardy, look at the screen here. Wait, hold on. Fix this. There we go. Shardy, call call yourself this. If you get the reference, I'll I'll cash up you two dollars. What are you holding up? So. You know in Kingdom Hearts, right? With I like the whole if you join the organization thirteen, you put an X oh in the middle of name. Oh my god! I already, I already got already. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I realized it says I am X Yay. <laughs> that's why. That's why I was looking. I was like, is that supposed to be a name? It says I am X. Oh, Shardy says, what does it say? I feel like there has to be a different name than that. It has to be. We'll figure it out. So where we leave off at? Hold on, let me pull up my my my, my page here. Oh yeah, so we was discussing how uh how we like the fact that Kobe's story is kind of like the B plot to everything. Right. Which I really do like. It's a. Uh... Because again, like how we was discussing how like pretty much Kobe is the parallel to Luffy. So I like the fact that instead of just getting few glimpses of how Kobe's adventures is going on and we're just strictly strictly like we're strictly just staying with the crew the whole time, I like the fact that we can take breaks from the crew here and there to go see what Kobe and them is up to. So I like that. I like that. It's like a B side to the story. And then uh we finally uh 
So we cut back to uh, Zoro and Nami being chained up in the back. And they are talking to... What's bro's name here? Buggy Pirates. Here we go. As well, I don't know. What? Hi. Because I always butcher his name. Yes. Dude, dude on the unicycle. Kabaji. That's his name. Because I, I I knew his name. I just didn't want to mess it up. Because I always call him Kabaji. <laughs> but I know it's Kabaji. <laughs> so we finally see Kabaji here. Riding around his freaking unicycle. And... I ain't gonna lie, this is probably the one thing I don't like about the episode, but it's just because, like, why he got a whisper in Zero's ear like that? Just like, do you know who I am? I've been hunting you down for years. And I'm like, yeah. bro, what? You're like, just just talk normal. <laughs> that is so creepy. That's sus. That's way too sus. It is. And, uh, he pretty much kind of gives Zoro the backstory of how, like, you know, because Zoro's epithet is the pirate hunter Zoro, why uh he like he's been hunting down Kabaji and his brother all throughout the Gold Kingdom. He chopped off Kabaji's head to collect a bounty for it. And Kabaji, well, see, there it is. Kabaji wants to get revenge. But he literally gets revenge on Zoro in the dumbest way. So you know those uh torture games where it's like you tie the person up and you gotta spin the wheel while they're on it and you chuck knives at him to kind of build up the suspense of killing him. But it's like it's uh so the way how they did it in this in the in the One Piece live action was they had a uh, like no so like it's like the most generic thing possible is like anytime you see it in movies like that particular like tied up to the pole not tied up to the pole but tied up to the spinning wheel and then chucking the knives but it's like the most generic way possible where it's like the person keeps chucking the knives but they always somehow hit where the ropes are tied at. And I'm like, bro, come on. This is supposed to be your thing. How are you purposely missing? That's what I thought. I was like, okay, he's supposed to be taking revenge on him. But is he purposely missing? Like, you do this for, it looks like you do this for your job. You Like, you're a circus performer. So I'm like, all right, so you're a professional knife thrower. That's what you do. And you ride around a unicycle as you do it. So you're not hitting Zoro on purpose? Or is this like... Supposed to, you're only supposed to be scaring him. Like, I didn't know if he was actually trying to kill him or just trying to scare him or what. Maybe he was trying to scare him, but. I... <sighs> but you are right. Yeah, you are right. And that I hold knife on the rope cliche. It is very cliche because it's like. The minute I saw that scene happening, I was like, I immediately knew how Zora was going to get out. He's going to use one of the knives to cut the rope down. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew it. And uh, no, uh, Buggy didn't give Zoro his scar on his back uh, in this in the live action. And uh, But then Nami finds that uh, she still has one of her lockpicks here. And she says a pretty cool line when uh, Kabaji leaves. And uh, Zoro's like... Hold on, you got a lockpick? He she was like, Well, I had four, they only found three. And my biggest uh <laughs> my biggest question is <laughs> where was that fourth one at? We're not gonna question it. Uh, we all know we all know where it probably was, but we're not gonna question it. That's where I'm trying to be. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So, DMs. Oh, I'm about to. So then, uh, we hear a scream, and it turns out to be Luffy screaming. But then the shot cuts over to actually Luffy laughing, and you know, Buggy's doing one of those uh, guarantee. What well, what's those like one of those torture machines where you got stretch the body out? So he's doing that, and then it's not working because Luffy is a rubber, and so Luffy's just laughing, just like, yo, I could just do this all day. And then we kind of get some uh some more character development from Buggy here, where Buggy's trying to figure out 
So you want to be Pirate King, but what's the reason behind you want to be Pirate King? And he was like, well, is it a lover? Is it something you're trying to find? And he realized that Luffy has on a straw hat. And he realized, hold on, I know someone with this straw hat. And we get some backstory with Buggy, not like a full-on flashback, but it still stays in present day. And Buggy says, oh... Me and Shanks used to serve on the same crew, which I do find, I do like the fact they tell us early that Shanks and Buggy have that type of relationship going on versus waiting to Marine for it to find out. And I thought that was pretty cool. Like they never really told us that they served directly under Roger's crew, but they just, all he said was that they served under the same crew and he's mad at Shanks for... Not going, not going after the treasure, but what was he mad at Shanks for? Because in the live action, it's a bit different. Because in the one, in the actual manga and anime, he's mad at Shanks because he lost a uh, Captain John's treasure map. But he's mad at Shanks in this one because he like backstabs him in some way. Uh, uh, yeah, that's how he always says it. He says that Shanks. Uh backstabs them or betrays him or whatever because he made him eat the fruit which made him lose his ability to swim which also made him lose the treasure because he had to go down to die for it that's right but then well no spoilers no spoilers because i feel like they're going to show us that in season two exactly how like buggy got his powers because it's because the way how I'm picturing it, because we know exactly what happened. Yeah. The way how I seen it is like, you know, like in cartoons where it's like the like the character that's given the sad backstory, and then when it like flashes back to the backstory, it's something really stupid that was actually there doing. <laughs> I feel like it should have like that's how I'm picturing it. Just like he backstabbed me long ago, and then you hear like. Woo! Yeah, exactly. And then, <laughs> and then, that's just how I pictured it. That's exactly how it was. Like I was, I'm trying to think. How do you get backstabbed to, into eating a fruit? I don't know. But we I, know, we know exactly how he ate the fruit. Yeah, but he he, he was trying to hide it, wasn't he? Yeah. So, I, I, it was all his fault. There's no way around it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Buggy snatches the hat. And then we find out that one of Luffy's main purposes of trying to find the, uh, the One Piece is to prove to Shanks that he is going to be a great pirate. Which is, which is true. And I did like the way how Buggy came to that conclusion where it's like, Oh, is it a lover? Is it uh you trying to do something else? Oh wait, I know someone with this straw hat. Oh, you trying to impress Shanks? And I, I kind of like the way how that kind of got revealed versus Luffy actually just trying to tell him. It's a uh, buggy kind of pieces everything together. So then Luffy breaks out, and we see uh. He's about he's about to hit buggy, and then we finally get buggy's uh. Devil Fruit reveal, and where he and uh, he knocks off Buggy's head, and Buggy's head lands into the crowd, and Buggy was like, "Oh, I forgot to tell you, I bought so Devil Fruit use it too," and he uh, got he has the Chop Chop Fruit, and the Chop Chop Fruit essentially gives Buggy the ability to uh, separate his body parts. And this is what the chop chop fruit looks like, and it gives Billy like Buggy the ability to separate his body parts. Which I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of a broken ability in a way. Where I'm like, okay, this guy can literally legit just separate his body at will with no problem, and then he can uh, what's it called? He can move it wherever he wants. It can go as far as way as wherever you want, as long as his head's not smashed in. And I feel like they're not going to really explain this, but 
as long as his feet is still firmly on the ground, he can move his body parts wherever he goes, like wherever he wants it. I don't think they're going to um, reveal that just yet because if they were going to reveal it, it would have been when uh, they locked up his different body parts. Remember? Mm -hmm. I think that's how they figured it out because he was constantly running with his body parts to um, make sure that his feet that, yeah, his feet was running with his, like underneath his body parts to make sure like they were the center of everything, like the eye yeah. of the storm. Yep. So if they do explain it later, it'll be half. It'll ah, sorry, it'll have to be in like the next major battle against Bucky, which would probably be in Hogtown if they do do it. Yeah, because uh. In the episode, we see them separate Buggy's body parts. And I was like, the, when I was first watching it, I was like, hold on. Isn't, uh, why isn't, like, his body parts, like, kind of, like, scattered across the East Blue? But doesn't that happen after lockdown? Mm -hmm. Like, Buggy's side adventure is when he's trying to find all his body parts again? Yeah, that's after lockdown. And then, that's, uh... That's what? also when you meet, um, that little... That little dude trapped in a chest. That's right. Uh, Gaimon or Gaimon is his name? Yeah. The little green afro dude? That was funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then uh, Buggy, I ain't gonna lie, he does like the coldest attack in this, uh, where he says, I got eyes and ears everywhere. And he's like, I'm gonna do a little trick. And then he, tap he uses his hand, taps on Luffy's shoulders, and he released one of those uh, knockout gas. And I was like, all right, that was kind of cold. Yep. Yeah. When um those knock that knockout gas is that supposed to uh, sorry is that supposed to be his buggy balls or or yeah, but I think oh. I think they're just gonna call him call every last one of them buggy balls, even though they can each do different things. Okay, because I was like, okay, the buggy ball is supposed to be the explosive one, right? Yeah. So why did, I was like, okay, that's supposed to be his buggy ball. And it looks like a buggy ball. He crushed it and it, like, you know, powder, the same powder and everything, the sleeping powder came out. I was like, all right, what do you call that if it's not a buggy ball? So I think, I'm, I, I think this is a situation where you're not really supposed to think too much into it because it's almost like Joker toxin in a way. Well, like, even though they call it Joker Toxin or Joker Gas, it's almost all the same thing. Because <laughs> uh, that's how that's that's how I always pitch a bug. I pitch a bug is just, like, one piece version of the Joker. You, you actually are right about that one. And then, so, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, because we actually talked about that where, uh, Kabaji talks to uh, Zoro about his past because that actually we went over that a little too early. <laughs> and then, so we cut over to uh, Garp again and uh, Kobe B plot now. And yeah, hell yeah, we already talked about that too where Garp asks Kobe why, why does he want to be a Marine and all that. But he also questions like, so why you were working with the Pirates? And Kobe just flats out like tells him. Well, I don't know if the Marines will let me enlist if I tell them I was working with pirates, but Luffy's not a bad guy. He's the one who actually told me to go along with my uh, my dreams of being a great Marine after he saved me from my Vita's crew. And because I've watched, like, we watched the whole series already and we're pretty much just re-watching it for the reviews here, uh, I noticed this one little thing here. It seems like Garp is proud of what Luffy is doing, in a way. That's what I also thought, too. Uh, right? Or, yeah, that's what I thought, too. Like, after um, he saw, after he met Kobe, mm -hmm. and he dealt with um, Axe Hand Morgan, I assumed that after chasing Luffy down and throwing the cannonballs at his ship or whatever. Mm -hmm. I figured that uh, he would 
figure like how can I explain this? He was seeing everything that Luffy was doing as he was like chasing after him. Yeah. So he was like, okay, I'm proud that like of course he's my grandson. I, I expect this of him. Like even though he's a pirate, he was still doing like what good Marines things. do. Like what Marines yeah. are supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. So I expect this of him, but he's still a pirate, so we gotta fix that. Exactly. And I like that because and this is just for me though, but it's like when I first saw this and I didn't realize like I thought like why are they making Garp such a jerk? Like that. <laughs> but I still kept with it because I was like, nah, because I feel like they're telling something like some underlying meaning and then when we finally like get the reveal of Garp's laugh, I'm like, okay. Which happens in like what in episode four we finally no episode three we finally get to see Garp laughing. That's where I was like, okay, he's actually he's proud of Luffy, just not proud that he's a pirate, but he's proud of what he's doing overall though. Yeah. So I like that. And then so we uh go back and we actually have another flashback here. And this is actually when Luffy gets the straw hat for what I'm seeing. No, 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 no. This is uh when Shanks and them finally uh, fights the Mountain Bandits, and then you know, pretty much he tells the Mountain Bandits like, if you not right, like you're not ready for this fight, if you're willing to draw a gun, make sure you use it. And we you know get the iconic scene of Ben Beckman shooting down the Mountain Bandits, and then uh. And then we finally get to see B, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> B, we all know this is you. <laughs> so everybody don't know if he, if you guys don't know who B is, is uh what well, what he looks like. This is him. <laughs> and then uh so we get to see I'm Yasop. <laughs> <laughs> so we get Yasop, uh Ben Beckman. Uh, what's the the fat dude's name? Dang, I'm really drawing a blank on everything all of a sudden today. It's a weird name. I can never remember it. Red hair pirate. Here we go. I'm just <laughs> gonna bring these up. Lucky Rue. So we get Lucky Rue, Yasop, and Ben Beckman all fighting with uh Shanks here. Yep, it's Lucky Roo. And, uh... And, uh, Shank... I ain't gonna lie. My favorite scene is with Yasa, where, uh... One of the Mountain Bandits, uh... He holds down Ben Beckman. Not Ben Beckman. Lucky Roo. And, yes, I was like, well, I can't get a clear shot from the straight... From, like, a straight, like, angle. So, he kind of, like... Oh, there's a pole next to me. So, he shoots the pole, and the bullet bounces off the pole. And it's the Mountain Bandit. I was like, hey, yo, that, that, you know, even though I said Buggy's, uh, hand scene was kind of cold, this scene was even colder. I was like, ain't no way. That, that, that kind of solidifies that. Yes, I'm like, well, the whole Red Hair Pirates is a crew you don't want to mess around with, but I think it also shows what they're each capable of. Whereas, like, you got Yasop with the guns. You got Lucky Rouge come, literally coming out of nowhere and shooting down the uh, Mountain Bandits, which I'm like, even, th- like, in the SBS that's been came out that, that Lucky Rouge is actually one of the fastest people in the verse. You got Shanks, who we figure out, it's like, we see one other thing a little later on. And then we got Thick uh, Ben Thickman over here, you know, doing Ben Thickman stuff because he's, he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, he's fighting with the, uh, with with the, uh, what's that, with a, with a gun, which he's known to do every so often. So what do you think of this scene, B? I think the scene is actually pretty dope. The fact that you see what they're all sort of capable of, capable of doing, because they did it all naturally. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you want to, you want to mess with us? Fine. We can, we can do this right here, right now. And we won't break a uh, we won't break a sweat, and they showed that they didn't break a sweat. Nope. 
they handle that like real pirates. Exactly. And then, so now we are flashed back to the puggy tent. And uh, Luffy is trapped in a container with water pouring in on him. And he looks a little weak. And this goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning here. When I said that uh, Makino kind of tells Luffy lore about the devil fruits. And she also says that the every devil fruit user has a weakness to Mother Ocean. Because mother like devil fruits are mystical items that uh the sea god does not support because it's not technically supposed to be what nature intended to be and uh so in order to kind of combat the devil fruits the sea goddess what she did was anytime a devil fruit user is submerged in water as a whole cuz i think that was a little bit of a mistake there where in Buggy's case, they said it's supposed to be seawater, but it's actually supposed to be just water in general or some, like, yeah, just as long as it's some type of liquid ass thing or water, as long as they're submerged and they lose their abilities whatsoever. And we see Luffy's kind of kind of weakened because of the seawater that's pouring into the box, and he's drowning here. And then, uh, Luffy and, like, not Luffy, uh, it kind of like, you know, Luffy has another flashback. Because th- this is... There was a lot of flashbacks in this one. So there's flashbacks to... Uh, what's the dude, the Mountain Bandit's name? Because he's such a minor character. It's something stupid, too. Uh, I'm not going to remember it. Hugama, that's his name. So, uh, Hugama kidnapped Luffy and, uh, holds him on the boat and, pre- and Luffy says, like, yo, when Shanks find out, he's gonna come get you. And Hugama's like, well, he has to come out to sea to get me. And, uh, the, we finally get to see the Lord of the Coast, which is also a sea king. See if I can get a good, I'm just gonna pull him up here. Well, I thought you can find him in the trailer. Yeah. Instead of just trying to screenshot it. Uh-huh. So we finally get to see the Sea King, which is here. Honestly, the trailer... The yeah, trailer CG... Got... Yeah, the trailer CGI is actually... Because compar- I'm comparing the two, it actually looks a lot better in the actual series itself. But mm-hmm. we finally get to see the Sea King attack... Well, eat Higuma. Or Higuma. And... Takes a munch out of Saints' arm. Which we find out after, because Luffy pointed it out. But then, we finally get to see Conqueror's Hockey. So, B, I want to ask you this. How did you feel about that scene? I thought it was... Okay, first, let me say this about the Mountain Bandit. I was kind of hoping to see that, like, in how in the anime, uh, literally how... <clears throat> it chomped the mountain bandit and his boat all in one like bite. Mm-hmm. I was really hoping to see that, but it was uh, what it kind of did was just threw him out, like destroy the boat and um started, you know, it pulled him down. I was kind, I was really hoping for the big chomp, you know, like mm-hmm. how they, like how they do in like uh, what's the movie like the Meg or whatever it is it's called. Mm-hmm. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just saw one people. <laughs> um, I was like, I'm kind of glad we didn't see what was happening underwater. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, now to Shane's getting his arm chopped off. I think it was pretty fine. It was pretty okay. Like it was, it was natural, and it, like Shanks, it, he didn't show any like too like too much emotion about it. Mm-hmm. It was literally just you know, it was seamless. Yeah, I think he did like give out some type of like grunt or something, mm-hmm. but that was it. And then you see the Conqueror's hockey, tell and telling it to get lost. <laughs> oh. Now. 
with the Conquerors hockey, I thought, like, I was like, okay, that's, it's okay. But it seemed like, I guess it's supposed to be for dramatic effect, but it seemed like it was, like, a long build-up to do it and try to, like, focus it. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So, and I saw how the only way they could, uh, the only way they could, like, display it was just a weird little air ripple, like, from his eye. Just one little ripple. That's it. And I'm like, okay. I don't mind it, but also, I feel like there should be a different effect for, I, I don't know, some type of, I don't know, like, some type of zoom in, like t- like there was a zoom into the eye, but like blur everything else, like make a, mm-hmm. a, 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 a like a a a, a, a I'm, I'm starting to stutter, my god, a like a time lapse effect or something. If you know, if you understand what I mean, I know I'm not explaining myself very well. I think I'm getting it. So you know how for the manga it would show it as like lines going in as like as it's zooming into his eye. Mm-hmm. So think of that like how you see um how you see So kinda like this. So like that in a way. Yeah, almost like that. Just with like some type of intensity like cropping his like cropping around his eye like you know what i mean something to show more intensity to it that's why i felt like it probably needed for me so because like i i think i yeah i pulled out the picture of you know get lost but let me do this because i'm going to make a comparison so we got that but then We get this here, and I'm bringing up both, like both the manga panel and this. Mm -hmm. Where we get the close up of his eye, but at the same time, comparing it to the manga panel, well, the anime mainly is what I have up. Yeah. I think me personally, not one, we already, I think it's one we already know, we as the fans know. The uh, like we know what Conqueror's hockey is, so we know for a fact like what they like what he did, and I think this is one of my like biggest fears is how hockey's going to transpire into live action when it gets there. I'm wondering how they're going to do Luffy's hockey. Exactly. Whereas like with Conqueror hockey, like. I get why they had to do it because even in the manga and it went to anime at the time too, Oda didn't know how he was going to handle the power system. So hockey wasn't even a thing yet. I mean, we now know Shanks used Conqueror's hockey on the Lord of the Coast. But again, this is a nice one-to-one shot from the original panel. Let me pull up the original panel. Hmm. Exactly. So Shadow said it perfectly. He said it's good enough to drive interest into new Man. fans. Yeah. Agreed. But he said he would like it more if they used the scarred eye versus the regular eye. Like that's if they used yeah, yeah, if they used the scarred eye, that really like Okay. That would have that would have gave it more intensity. That I I feel like that would have helped me more. Because he used it he they show it was the scarred eye that they showed in the original, right? And that's what I'm thinking. That's what I thought it was. Where they used the uh, the basic one here. But again, like actually I, they should use the scarred eye because that it was he looked back at the um 
at the sea beast with at the on the side where his arm was missing. And isn't yeah, and isn't that the it has to eye be the side? left side. Yeah, it's the left eye where where his scar the left side where his scar is. But you yeah. know mm. No, I did not watch uh, Opera Hammer. It looks good though. I need to watch it. But no. Uh, so and uh yeah, she got sixty thousand. Yeah, make sure you hit that follow button, dog. You know what I'm saying? It'll help a brother out. Uh so yeah, we get Shanks following using Conqueror's hockey. Already talked about that of like Luffy and uh, Nami and Zoro getting free, but they finally catch up to like so Nami and Zoro escape uh Kabaji. They free Luffy from the little container that he was in, and Luffy coughs up the the uh the Grand Line map, and he's like, uh, bleh. and uh you know he couldn't he couldn't handle the the, the the deep throat man, you know what I'm saying? And so you know Bucky's excited because he's like, holy crap, my map! So he reaches for the map. The gang is about to fight Buggy, and then Buggy's really showcasing his powers here. Which I thought was really dope. And I really liked the lighting. And it really... This part here. Let me pull this up. Because it really highlights that... uh, How much power Buggy truly has. And this is why he's the GOAT. So Zoro goes to chop uh, Buggy's head off. And Buggy just like pops his head off saying, Nope. So the, it kind of confirms that Buggy's stronger than Mihawk. Just throwing it out there. That's what Buggy's supposed to do in front of Mihawk as well, too. Exactly. Like, but and then uh, I, I should have narrow cropped it here because <laughs> mm. uh, it's Nami in the background. She's just like, "So what's my next line?" <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so we get that part there. Uh, and then they're all about to fight Buggy. And then that's when Luffy comes up with the idea of, all right, we need to separate his body parts to actually do something. So non- so Zoro and Luffy are knocking around the body parts. I'm just kind of speed blitzing this point here because I, I want to get to the game now. <laughs> and, uh, and plus, this is all just kind of like fight scenes, really. And so yeah. uh, Nami is lifting up all the boxes while Zoro and Luffy are knocking the boxes in. And they defeat uh, Buggy now. And now the iconic scene of Buggy just being head, a head, a hand, and two feet has officially came up. And that we get this amazing scene here. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Nope. Perfect. And I'm bringing up both the manga panel and this scene here. It's a perfect one to one. Yep. I'm. I su- cape, that's all. Say again. I kind of wish he had his cape, and that's all. If he had his cape, it would be too overpowered. <laughs> and I will say overall with this episode I felt like they did a good job with Buggy like they introduced him as like a really really threatening person that has a pretty decent devil fruit but at the same time they also captured how goofy Buggy is too which I was like good job episode 2 good job I love it what you think of it so 2 was yeah, I think they did a good job too, especially with expelling Buggy, like uh, with uh, Bazooka. Mm-hmm. I, I was wondering how that was gonna look. I know. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. how was the budget going to be sending CGI stretchy arms away? Like, see, having CGI stretchy arms blast away. 
CGI just a hand, just a head, feet, and hands. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But they, you know, and I think the way how they fix it was with the lighting in the background to kind of cast a more front, a front facing shadow towards us. So it really hide some of the editing that they had to do for it. But it made it, it made it look so good and I love it. I would say I was a little worried about that scene just a little bit, but I had confidence that they was going to pull it off. Okay. Yeah. But it, overall, it was definitely a good um good episode. Amazing episode. And then we end off with the crew setting the town free, letting them go. And then we uh cut to them on the sea. And uh, Nami sneaks off and she pulls out some snail pots, which I'm going to need. I'm going to need some snail pots. And uh, she calls up a certain somebody, which we find out a little later on, saying like, hey, I got the map. So we already know who it is. She's calling up Arlong's crew because she's going to betray them. But that's kind of obvious there. But that's how it ended off. So I would say out of 10, I would give this episode in 8.5. What would you give it? I would say... I'll go with the 8. 8? Yeah, just an 8. 8? Solid. So in the chat, I want y'all to give me your rating for this episode. Episode 2 of One Piece Live Action title is the man in the straw hat and uh what would you guys give this episode out of 10 i give it an 8.5 b gives it a a 8 out of 10 what would you guys give it and uh cool you ready to uh play the game uh yeah let me switch my stuff over yep Shadow said he loved Buggy's performance. Buggy's performance was really good in this. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was. I was. I didn't know if it was going to be like um, if the actor was going to be like more comical or okay. Like I was wondering if it was going to be more like a Joker type of Buggy. Yep. Which, at first, that's what they showcased, but then we got regular Buggy, which I'm happy with. Shadow says, uh, I had a 10 out of 10 until something later happened, so he's okay with just saying a 9 out of 10. I agree with that. And I think I know what episode we talk you're talking about, but we get there when we get there. And then, uh, let me pull... My lord... <gasps> Uh, uh, what, 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 what? Oh, well, you need to, uh, address the village about everything that's going on. All right. Hand me my drip. Here you are, my lord. Thank you. Lord 17, where did you get that? I got this from a uh, Kage Cat. Oh, you never heard of it? Well, they sell really dope merch there. And if you're interested, definitely hit them up. A uh, link to their website will be in the description and comment section down below. 